I'm joined now by Dr. Thomas Dees talking about ASGE's all-important session about really optimizing cost efficiency in this value-based world. Can you talk to me about some of the things that you're going to cover in this session? Uh, certainly. Uh, we're on a Tuesday afternoon at uh, 2 o'clock. I have four world experts uh, going to help us uh, discuss some of these issues around uh, efficiency in a GI practice. Uh, new uh, payment methodologies, including bundling of payments. Uh, we'll also talk about uh, some of the foundations necessary for making the transition to a value-based world uh, that is more population health-based than it is just treating the sick. Uh, some of those uh, speakers, uh, Dr. Joe Vaccari, uh, Dr. Scott Ketover, uh, and Dr. Luke John Day will join me uh, in this discussion. Things are changing really so rapidly, but maybe not necessarily in the doctor's offices. What do you think the biggest challenge is to try to upgrade? Well, there are plenty of challenges out there anytime there's change. Uh, to be honest with you, I think that many of the changes are very good for, for health care. I think where we end up is going to be very positive for our patients and uh, for the population. But the, the biggest issue here is we're moving from a system that has always been treat the sick, uh, and get paid based on volume of how much you do uh, to a new system which is now keeping pe pe people healthy, population health, keeping folks from getting sick, uh, which is vastly different, uh, and the reimbursement system will be more based on value, in other words, how, how much quality we produce, how efficient we are, and not so much how much production we can provide. Uh, I think that's good for patients. I think in the end it's going to be very good for, physician, for physicians and for the healthcare system. But clearly there's going to be some growing pains, I think, changing that mindset. What do you think is the key to providing really good solutions? Well, right now most of our practices aren't really set up for the new era. Uh, I think a lot of things are needed. Um, a number of physician groups have actually accomplished this over the years in different payment methodologies. But you need good, strong physician leadership. Uh, I think physicians need to stay at the helm in making these changes, uh, not the least of which is because physicians tend to follow physicians better uh, in these type of changes. Uh, the second thing is we need a very sound uh, information technology infrastructure that connects all parts of the community. Uh, it's interoperable so that no matter where you go as a patient, the physicians and care providers have information about how to care for you. And then you have to completely change the payment methodologies so that we're being paid well to keep people healthy, to keep them educated, uh, uh, to keep them from getting sick, rather than a system that pays us only when they get sick. How has the healthcare overhaul really changed that and kind of redirected people's mindset toward that keeping people well model? Well, I think in many areas we, we are focusing on that, particularly in areas uh, in managed care where there's a capitation model. Uh, one of those new payment models is, is risk payment, where you benefit from, again, lowering cost, keeping people healthy, or you're paid an entire amount to keep the patients healthy. In that case, your best scenario is the healthier that you keep the patients and your population, uh, economically it's better for the group and clearly it's uh, better for the patients as well. Uh, I'm, I'm much more motivated if I go to a physician and their goal is to keep me healthy than just wait for me to get sick. You're absolutely right. It's better for doctors and patients. It's a real burden right now and that's why I think this session is so critical. Thank you so much.